Hey everyone, Coding Heaven here. I'm back with another video, and uh, today the video is gonna be about the ultimate game loop. It's gonna be a game loop better than the one I used in uh, my previous game, the, um, my previous game, which is Simple Pong. So uh, before we get started with that, I wanted to show you guys my new website. So just write coding hyphen heaven dot ml, and you'll be introduced to the homepage of my website. It's still in construction you know it's not it doesn't look the best you have my playlist down here you have a subscription list here you can subscribe directly from here that pop-up is annoying so I'll fix that uh, you can access all my social media directly from the bottom here and you'll probably be more concerned for my project so I have articles on, uh, on my project so we can just press um, just any one of the articles I have my article already on factorial and pong so uh, if you want to genre specific for like game development example you have there you have a, a whole tab on top of here mathematical algorithms too you have a button to download all my projects this button will reroute you to github it's not uh it's not right now it's going to reroute you to google drive but i just set up my github so um so i'll change that now and uh, yeah that's my that's my website and uh, i have i posted all my so i'll post a link in the in the description also a link to the vlog I'm gonna write about this video, the ultimate game loop, and I'll um, I'll link to all my social media too in the description. Be sure to follow me everywhere. Okay, let's jump right into Eclipse. It's already open. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna talk about the ultimate game loop. First of all, let's let's close this. Let's close let's close all of this. Now, a game loop is basically is the meat of your game it's what makes everything run it's what makes the physics update it's what makes the screen to be redrawn okay that is that is the basics of the game it redraws and it recalculates the physics it makes a movement collision test all of those in two little functions called update and draw well little is is relative but update and draw and those are called in um, those are called several times per second, sometimes 60. So 60 FPS means 60 frames per second, means your screen is being redrawn 60 times per second. And for example, 60 updates per second is basically your physics is being updated or being recalculated 60 times per second means you have a collision test 60 times per second, you move 60 times per second, all those things, etc., etc. So now we're going to go into my simple Pong game. If you haven't seen the playlist, I really suggest you go see it. It's very useful and you might understand much more. I'll put a pop up on top and link in the description for my playlist on simple Pong. Perfect. Now let's jump right into the game loop. The game loop is in the run method. This is, um, this is inherited from the runnable interface. So our thread when we start our thread we give it this uh, this uh, this uh, we give it this exact class means game we give it this class and it runs and if you remember a thread what it does is it it looks for the overridden method means the in this case the run method and it runs it so this entire method is run is run by this thread and then we start the thread and we start the game and blah 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 and all that type of stuff so let's get started this right here I'm gonna highlight the game loop this is the game loop now there's nothing wrong with this game loop this game loops fantastic actually in fact I heard this was the same exact game loop used in Minecraft I'm not surprised it's a great game loop look if you run the game it works perfectly fine it's smooth it's not nothing's wrong with it so I'm not criticizing the game loop I just think there's a better one there, there's a better one now the reason why this, I think there's a better one is because in this game loop you update at the same frequency as you draw now that's a problem why because for and, and in this case it's 60 times per second this is a problem why, why is this a problem because you need a computer to update to, to redraw the screen as much as possible if not then just like your, your frame rate won't be good. Like for example, in, in if you play CSGO or Fortnite, you 
don't you normally people don't cap their FPS because they have 75 hertz monitors, 125 hertz monitors, 144, one uh, two, 240, 244 I think that exists too. You have really high refresh rate monitors. So why why would you cap the FPS to 60 if you can take advantage of those high refresh rate monitors? So that's why this is it's not the best. It's not the best to use. Well, I mean, for Pong, it's perfectly fine. It's absolutely, it's like, it's more than enough. But I don't really settle for just more than enough. Here on Coding Heaven, we settle for the best of the best. So, let's fix this. Let's create a new game loop. Let's create the ultimate game loop, like it says in the title. So let's comment all of this, and let's start the ultimate game loop. Perfect. Now, like I said, in the ultimate game loop, you want the FPS, the frames per second, to be separate from to be separated from the UPS, the updates per second. So you want to update the physics at a different frequency than you update the uh, the, the screen, the canvas. Like here I said, it's updated at the same frequency, which is 60. So let's make two constant, two finals in Java, that that basically holds the value of the updates per second, the maximum updates per second, and the maximum frames per second. Let's do that. Perfect. We have those two. Now, uh, this we're going to call it for the rest of the video the FPS, and this we're going to call it the rest of the video the UPS, the updates per second, updates per second, frames per second. Perfect. Let's move on to the code. Now this should be pretty intuitive, 60 times per second, I want to redraw the canvas, 60 times per second, I want to recalculate the physics, do the movements, um, test the collisions, uh, all of those things that are used in any type of game, AAA games, uh, normal Pong games, Snake, all of the games have this. Let's start with a few more variables. Okay, so since in the loop we can't really know how many times we can't really it's really it's much harder to determine that like the number of times you updated and if it's reached to 60 stop if it's not reached to 60 continue it, it's kind of hard to do that so the way we do it is with time we calculate time so how do you do that is in nanoseconds so if you have a game that updates the ups is 60 that basically means that there are between every single update 33 million nanoseconds if you do uh well, by the way one second has 1 billion nanoseconds so 1 billion divided by 60 is around 33 million so you have 330 you have 33 million nanoseconds between every single update if there are 60 updates per second so let's calculate that value let's put it into a variable Okay, now those are the variables. Basically, u here means update, by the way. I just put u because if I put update here, it's going to be a long constant. Just like this is a long constant, it's annoying to work with long constants. And I want to make this video as easy as possible to understand. So let's, let's think u is update, f is frames. So u optimal time, what does that mean? That means that the optimal time to update, if you want 60 FPS, is 1 billion. 1 billion nanoseconds divided by the number of updates. So, one, like I said, 1 billion divided by 60 is 33 million. 33 million nanoseconds, therefore, every 33 million nanoseconds, we want to update. That's the U optimal time. You want it to optimally, in optimal conditions, with a strong enough computer, you want to update every 33 million nanoseconds. Now, the question is, how are we going to calculate those nanoseconds? Like, how are we going to do that? And how are we going to calculate the difference between uh, the difference in nanoseconds between every update? We need variables to calculate that. So I'm going to write that right now. Okay, so those are the variables. U delta time, F delta time. U as in update, F as in frames. So the delta time is the difference in time in nanoseconds. And this calculates the difference in time between every single update. We need those to see if... If it's bigger than the optimal time, update. If it's smaller, no one cares. Don't update. Because it's been less than 33 million nanoseconds and we don't want it to update before that. We want it to update when it's at that time or after it. Let's let's move on. And also, 
how are we gonna like it's kind of a paradox because how are we gonna calculate the delta time that is used to calculate the if we, if we arrived at the optimal time we need a nanosecond timer let's write that down so here I put a uh, uh, like a start time so the way we're gonna calculate it is we're gonna find the difference between a start and a stop uh, a start and like an end we're gonna find the difference between those two those, those two times and that's gonna be the time between every single update so every loop of every loop of the game loop <laughs> every loop of the game loop we're gonna calculate the difference in time that it, that that loop took from the beginning to the end of the loop uh, it's, it will be clearer when we do the loop. So that's the calculated time. Now, finally, we can actually start the loop. So here, people tend to do while true. Now, I won't be doing that while true. Why? Because, because I don't want to. While true is kind of, a, it, it's weird, it's, it's ambiguous. You, you don't know, you can't really stop it easily. So I have a boolean, if you watch my, my video, I have a boolean called running. And I'll be using that one because when you turn, when you activate the thread, when you start the game, when you activate the thread, running is turned into true. So we can just plop in running right there. And even while true doesn't necessarily work in Java, but anyways, we just plop in running there. Running is true. So the, the loop is going to run. No, don't worry. Now, we, the first thing we want to do is calculate the difference in time. That's perfect. So basically, we calculated the time that it took to um, the, the basically the, like the we calculate the nanoseconds again, and we calculate the difference between the current time and the time it started. In this case, in the first in the first uh, execution of the loop, it's insignificant. So we do start time and current time is right after it. It's really insignificant the time, which is why we do plus equals. That that really that really really tiny amount of time that it takes for the loop to get in here and here and test the running if it's true, it takes a really insignificant amount of time. It's like three to the ten to the minus seven, three times ten to the minus seven uh, nanoseconds actually. Or now, and of course you calculate the difference time, current time minus start time, current time minus start time. I put it in brackets to be more clear. And of course, start time equals current time because when the loop executes again, you want the current time to be something new and you want the start time to be the last time it was calculated, which is the current time. It's going to come to you in a bit. Now, the next block of code is for the updates. Now we want to see here, the U delta time, the change in time. Is it bigger or equal to the optimal time that we want to update at? If it is, then I want you to update. I want to update at that point. So let me write that. This should be pretty clear. So if the delta time is bigger than the optimal time you need to update, so if the time here is bigger than 33 million seconds in the case of 60 updates per second, if it's bigger than 33 million, uh, 33 million nanoseconds, sorry, then update. I want you to update and of course, we need to reset the value. We need to reset it because if we don't reset it, then it's going to keep on going and it's always going to be bigger than new optimal time. We need to bring it down unless it's always going to be bigger than new optimal time. So let me write that line of code. Perfect. So like up here, we did plus equals. Here we're going to do minus equals. So we subtract the new optimal time. We have a bit of time left inside the variable and that variable that time is going to is going to overlap on each other every single the more loops it comes the more that extra time is big and eventually is going to make one extra update so it's it's kind of hard to think about now but bear with me you're going to understand it in later so now let's do the same exact thing but now with redrawing so now we use the f optimal time so if the uh if i want the fps to be 30 it's gonna work it's gonna it's gonna draw at 30 fps instead of 60. this is why this game loop was was it was weak it wasn't that good because they were both at the same rate they weren't it wasn't that versatile so let me write that block of code perfect it's the same thing just put f in front of everything and draw instead of updates 
Now this is, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. I told you, very simple. Let's run it. And it works. It's a bit sloppy, I know. Uh, let's, let's fix that, by the way, because last time it was 60 FPS, so let's fix the frames per second to 60 FPS. And let's run it again. And it's smooth. Now, there's something wrong here. There's something missing. You guys should be asking yourselves, where do we calculate the FPS and output it into the console? Like up here, we did system the output FPS frames. So to do that, it's, it's very, very simple. In fact, you're just gonna create uh, two, two, uh, two integers, frames and updates. It holds the number of times you update it and the number of times you redrew the frame. Of course, every time we update, what we want to do is update plus plus, and here the same thing for uh, for drawing, which is frames plus plus. And in, and now down here, what we want to do is every single second that passes, we want to output the UPS and the FPS and reset them to zero because if not they're gonna out they're gonna keep on increasing because you see here we do F plus plus we down here we need to reset them to zero if we're arrived to a second. How to know if you write the second we're not gonna use nano time that's way too specific to write per second so we're gonna use current millisecond time. Now the millisecond time is awesome. Let me just write the line of code and let me explain it to you. When you call the current millisecond, the current time millisecond from the system, it gives you in milliseconds the time, bet the time between now, the, the, the time you call it, and midnight January, 19, January 1st, 1970. Now that's incredible. I don't know if that fascinates you. It's fascinating. I, lo I just love the fact that the time between January 1st, 1970 at midnight until the time now does not overflow along. Along is very, very big. Anyway, that was just a, that was just a fun fact. Let's write the line of code. So we want to check if one second has passed. How many milliseconds are there in one second? There are a thousand milliseconds in one second. So we need to check if the difference between the current time and the time that I set up here is a thousand. Let me write that. Okay, that should be clear. If the time exactly right now, exactly now, minus the time before is a thousand milliseconds, one second is bigger or equal to a thousand milliseconds actually, which is one second. That's the time where you wanna. That's that's one second. So you wanna update the frames. I mean, you wanna output the um, the number of frames per second, and you wanna reset them. Let me do that. Done. We are done. And that is done for the game loop. Now let's explain this here. You update, you refresh the variables. So now every single second you're going to have a actual time. So um, so actually, let me show you if you don't run these two lines of code, what's going to happen. Oh, wrong place for the... Perfect. Let me run those. Let me show you what happens. So now you have FPS 59, 119, 179, 239. It keeps on increasing. So you need to set them back to zero so it gives you an accurate time. And here, time plus equals 1,000 basically means that 1,000 a a thousand, uh, milliseconds has passed. One second has passed. Increase the timer. So like basically, it can do it again. If we don't do that, this block, this if, like will always be true. Now let's... Let's say the FPS again, 59, 61, 59, 60. So let's run through it again. And let me point out a few things. This is the ultimate game loop. This is a very good game loop. If we want 120 updates per second, the ball is going to move really quickly. That's, that's It's cool. You see 120. But that introduces the next problem. I don't want one. I don't. I don't want to do that. Like when I put 120 updates per second, I want the ball to move at the same speed as if I put it to 60 updates per second. And if I put 100 frames per second instead of 60, I want the ball to move at the same speed. So here's how to fix that. 
and this is what Unity uses, any game developer uses, uses this exact trick. So you see here, U delta time, that is the time between every frame. The bigger that time, the lower the frame rate. Because it's more time between the frames means the lower the frame rate, the lower it update the the least the less it updates per second. And the shorter that time, the more it updates it updates per second, the bigger the frame rate. So we are gonna feed this time inside the update. And we're gonna give it the value in seconds. So we're gonna divide it by one billion. Perfect. Now Let's go fix our update method. Our update method is all the way down here. We're going to call it double DT. And we're going to give it to the paddle. And let me fix the paddle fun update function too. Uh, I mean the ball. We're going to give it to the ball. Sorry. Okay. Now what we're going to do with dt is we're going to multiply the speed by dt. Now here's the thing, dt is going to be very very small, so we're going to have to crank up the speed to like something like crazy. I, uh, I think what I fine tuned to was like 325, but you know that's how it is. So let's go back to game and let's set the FPS back to 60, I mean the UPS back to 60. Let's run the code. Now the ball is moving at a decent speed. It's actually smoother now, just, just for information. Anyways, it's moving at a decent speed. Perfect. Now hold that speed in mind. Let's change it to 120 FPS. It's the same exact speed, except for the paddles. But the paddles, you can do the same thing. So, and if you don't want the paddles to move at an increasing speed, what you can do is leave this at 60 set the UPS at 120, I mean the FPS at 120, and give the FPS, give the F delta time and not the U delta time. And the paddles move normally, but the ball moves slowly. Now, why is that? Because we're at 60 FPS. And we multiplying by the delta time between the frames, so let's just put it to 120. And that's gonna fix it. See, it's faster now. Updates per second. And if not, you can leave it at 60 and increase the speed of the ball. Uh, let's put it like 400. It, I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's your game. So, it, and like this is this is the perfect speed for Pong, like the one that's on the screen right now. So perfect. And that's the game loop. That's it for the game loop. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I will be posting this game loop on an article on the article on my website so don't miss that don't miss that article please read it it's going to be very very useful and if you didn't understand anything in this video it's going to be much clearer inside the article perfect thank you so much everyone for for listening and uh, for watching too i hope for you the best i hope you understood and if you didn't understand leave a comment i will be sure to i'll be sure to um, to help you understand and uh, that's it that's it. Ultimate game loop right there. I'll be using it for the rest of my games. All the games I'm going to do in the future, I'll be leaving it. I'll be using this game loop right here. And I'll be tweaking these values only. And, uh, yeah. Uh, tweet Notch. Tell him I beat his game loop. I'm kidding. Don't do that. He's a much better programmer than me. Billions of times better than me. Don't do that. Anyways, thank you for watching. Don't forget to visit all my social media websites. I link them all down in the description. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, whatever you want. And see you next time for Snake. I'll be coding Snake.